there was all ages and all cultures and lots and lots of new folk who'd never ever come into the Trust before. So that was a really good thing for us. All of the projects were about uh, either improving the environment through doing litter picking or making better connections with people who are isolated or improving fitness. So these are all individual outcomes um, just towards a, a happier, healthier, thriving community. It really amazed me the amount of people that turned out for Cran Hill that day to vote on it. And I mean, it, we were expecting maybe 80, but I think I believe there must have been over 150 people there. And it just shows that if we do these sort of things in Cran Hill, you'll probably get the support. Nerve wracking. All their faces staring back at you. That was the hardest thing ever. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I felt as though I've done something great. I really loved it. It's an achievement. Yeah, we couldn't believe it. We were shot, so very grateful. I was uh, very surprised and delighted from the pound to the thousand pound that we were awarded. It makes a massive difference. It was a great um, feeling to the whole room, a great atmosphere. Everybody in the audience applauded and clapped. Um, it was just lovely. Everybody wanted the groups to succeed. We did well and we're very grateful. It's just such an enriching process. Cranhill Parish Church and Cranhill Development Trust very much work in partnership to help the community of Cranhill thrive by encouraging people to get involved in different activities, to bring their ideas and projects to fruition and we try to take a very uh, collaborative approach that we're working with people and not for them. The Scottish Government and the Church and Society Council came up with a small pilot. They've invited four congregations to take part um, in different parts of the country. Because Cranhill Church is small, we very much rely on the Development Trust to help make things happen. So marketing the event, trying to promote it within the community, getting as many folk involved as possible, uh, helping people when they're not sure how to fill in the application so that it doesn't seem like a daunting task, and then just trying to give people a wee bit of confidence to stand up in front of a large group and pitch their idea to the community. A lot of the folk that are involved in projects through the Trust wouldn't necessarily be involved in the church, but there's also a lot of overlap as well. A lot of the people who presented on the day have a church connection of some kind, but also their neighbours and friends were involved. So it's a real way of reaching out into the community. I was really delighted with the turnout on the day. I think there were there was more than 150 people there and there were all sorts of people, different backgrounds, different ages. And there was a real collaborative feeling I think people uh, were keen to hear about the other projects they they were interested in what other groups were doing our first group presenting for the young at heart art class with a project called get creative in Cranhill is Lorette and Jean it went well but we've been first you were just slightly hope this is going to be okay but just talk naturally and see what people think. Jenny, our tutor, is excellent and we would like to learn more with her. Hi, uh, we would like to make a new mosaic sign for Cran Hall for the church, which would be enjoyed by all the people who come to use the building. It was just under £200 and uh, what we were hoping was money for the teacher to give her more hours also to buy materials because we'd like to do a mosaic, you know, and uh, that would cost a lot of money to buy the things. So just things like that we need. At the moment, they're painting a uh, wood to put in the garden. We've got a nice chap around there that does all the gardening. He's got a big box as he plants it, he makes it into food. So that's what half of them are doing that just now. The other half are doing drawing and painting. The art club has grown from one or two people to a dedicated group of around 12 to 15 people who regularly send to try painting 
glass painting and silk scarf painting. It's a place for them to go, they enjoy it, and we do a bit of talking, we do an awful lot of laughing, they get a great lift, they really do. Oh, I felt good, elated, <laughs> elated getting an award. Yes, it was very nice. There's a nice crowd of people here. I'd like to see them doing something that they enjoy. The group will welcome anybody, any age, <coughs> any ability. We'll teach you to knit, we'll teach you to crochet. We're making octopuses for Prem babies uh, who are in incubators because they find if they've got the long tentacles to hang on to, they don't pull out their tubes. We're also doing some squares for blankets for dogs who've had operations um, that's required them to be shaved and they get cold, so they make special blankets for them. Hats for the smoothies for the age concern. Uh, twiddle muffs for patients with dementia. We were awarded £50 and probably we're going to just use it to buy more yarn because obviously that's the, that's the most expensive thing. We've been given lots of needles and crochet hooks, but yarn is the continuing thing. We've also had some donations of yarn, but sometimes if you're making it for prem babies, you've got to make sure that it's clean and fresh and not be reusing old yarn where you don't know where it's come from. Hold up your wee knitting again. I'm not sure that everyone saw that the last time. The group themselves, it's a great social... Um, Thing to have. It helps to combat feelings of loneliness and isolation in the community, gives them something to get up for and come out in the morning. The chat, we chat about everything. You don't really talk about the knitting very much, but you ch talk about stuff that's going on. Because there was um, so many groups um, and we weren't sure how many people would vote for us, we, weren't, we didn't think we would actually get anything, so it was lovely, very nice to get some. We've been asked to come and talk for the Young at Heart Lunch Club for the over 50s. And we're asking for money to go a wee day out, a well-deserved wee trip, a wee trip down the water. I mean, it gives the people over 15 grand a holiday. And today it started off very, very, sh there's only about eight years, but we're nearly at 30 now that turn up for it. So they have their dinner and then we have a game of bingo. So they'll enjoy that. That's the main thing for it. It gives them, at least they know they can come out now. They might be in all week, but they can come out on a Friday. Uh, from maybe 11 o'clock on, mostly about 3 o'clock, half past 3, is when they go home. And that's the mid and afternoon now. So we wanted you to give us some money and help us make some new memories for them. Get them out for a wee trip and they can look back at it and say, that's when I went to my wee club. It gives them something new, it gives them something different. I mean, because they're always coming to Grand Hall and they're always there every Friday. So, I give them something different. They were £850 awarded. 500 goes towards the lunches and 350 will be for the, the minibus. To take us to either air or train, we'll, we'll probably be meeting to decide where we're going to go. And if there's any change, we have to get cutlery for the lunch club. <laughs> oh, it, it felt good, and it, and, it, and it made me feel good for the two girls that done the presentation because they were really nervous at the time, and for them to know that they won something, it probably made them feel feel they could maybe do something else. Hiya, my name's Amanda McMillan and I'm the dance teacher of Amanda McMillan School of Dance. We do two shows a year and also we do competitions so we travel around as well through Scotland and England. The kids are from Cranhill, they're from this area and it starts from ages 2 to 16 and it's boys and girls. The, the group that was achieved the most votes was the School of Dance. Yeah. Who got 64 votes? I was a bit nervous, so I didn't really know what to expect, and there was actually more people there than I thought there would be. Um, but I really enjoyed it when I got there. So. And look, there's Karen over there taking a picture. We were awarded a thousand. As we did the shows, we're needing lights and smoke machines as well, so we're going to use it on that. Um, also, we've had a gymnastics teacher come in, so we need mats, ribbons, and balls for stuff like that as well. Um, a big sound, a big sound speaker as well for the classes. And the kids are always needing knee pads, weights. It's good for their fitness, and also it's good to make friends at the club as well. And also, it's good to keep the kids off the street. Often, folk who are living with dementia. I still remember words and songs long after everything else gets difficult. And there's evidence that singing can improve memory for some time after the music has stopped. Our group is um, we're trying to get people with dementia together with their carers. It, it gets the carers, 
the carers' time to see how they're reacting. Maybe they'll never see this at home, but they'll see it in this kind of situation where we'll put songs on and they'll sing. Songs they'll probably remember and they'll really start singing for this. We are looking for 500 to cover expenses such as room hire, transport if needed. And publicity to let as many folk as possible know about the Come and Sing Cafe. The amazing look in their faces when they're doing this is really wonderful. So it gives the carers a wee, oh, my mummy, that's my mummy, or my daddy, or my granny, that's her back again, look at this, this is so wonderful. That's what we're going for. We hope you vote for our Come and Sing Cafe. And in the meantime, thank you for There's a lady volunteering very, very nicely to play the piano and she's, she just knows how to do these things to bring people out. That's a wonderful feeling, I've seen it with my mother and it is a wonderful feeling. Just sort of dancing about, oh this is great, look, look, look my mommy, look my mommy, you sort of saying, look at this, look at this. This is the reaction we've all got. Song, but we'll, we'll not indulge them. Okay, thank you. Off we go. Now, day to day, uh, we teach people to build guitars, repair guitars, and make unusual things that we can string up to play. Uh, we're looking for a thousand pounds uh, to start a project which merges. Uh, the guys for the ex-services with the refugees with um, status to stay and two excluded pupils from uh, St Andrews School. We look for people who have either been identified through referring agencies as isolated or have sp uh, specific post-traumatic areas in their life. And by the end of this project we've got plans to that the people that attend, hopefully up to 18 over the year, well, uh, every instrument they construct will be launching as a brand of instrument, guitar, made exclusively by the people for East End of Glasgow. We were awarded £1,000. That will go towards a separate tool package for each person who attends at the project. What helps them is they're included. They have a purpose to day to day. It's not just come down, sit down for a chat. They have a, a, a role to fulfil each day and a, a creative purpose with a construction manual. And it gives them, from morning to when they leave, something to focus on. At the moment they were doing the litter picking which we did the proposal for but we've only, they only can do like a certain amount because we've only got the, the stuff for that. Having their own litter picking equipment would let them as a school and weather permitting um, they will commit to a monthly litter pick in the local community. And they actually enjoy doing it. They actually find it fun. They do really do. <laughs> so the last thing you want to see is all rubbish running about where your children are playing. So I think it's going to benefit the full community as we clean. The human bus, yeah, it's so, see for the actual families that need it the most, or the wee stragglers going to school, so it'll be like a route they all can add on. This will be supporting children and families getting to school safely and on time, this improving attendance, timekeeping and attainment, benefiting families that need it the most. We were awarded £451.50 and we'll be spending the money on the high-vis jackets and the protective gloves for the litter picking for the equipment for that and the high-vis jackets for the walking school bus. I was over the moon, because I'm not going to lie, I didn't think we were going to do it, because there was lots and lots of great proposals out there. They were absolutely fantastic, and for the fact that we were one of the top fives actually made my day. It really did. That everybody who's aged 10 or primary 6 and over has five votes. Five votes. Everybody has five votes. You have to use them for five different projects and you have to use them all. The application process for Your Voice, Your Choice was really very straightforward uh, and people have, I think, gained a bit of knowledge about funding applications and also a bit of confidence about uh, writing other funding applications. It gives them a sense of ownership, a sense of control, where they decide what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. It allows the group to experiment or try something that they've maybe not been able to do before. And that then builds up some evidence of need, some evidence that folk are going to use the group, which will then allow them to, 
to apply further. Cranhill is often a community that is labelled as disadvantaged, but we very much focus on the potential and the opportunity, and it was great to see people stand up and make a pitch in front of a huge room full of people. Even though they were nervous and scared, they did it and they were warmly supported. I think the people in Cranhill really know what they want and they've got the skills to make that happen and sometimes all they need is a bit of funding to take on a new initiative. The people that live here know Cranhill best. Somebody coming from outside and going, they've, they don't know. The people that live here can only tell you the best, which Cranhill needs the best. That's what I think, definitely. It, it means they're getting what they think is relevant rather than what somebody outside thinks is relevant because there are lots of good ideas out there, but every community is different, so the people in the community need to vote for it and then it's owned by them and it's successful because the community want it. Why shouldn't they have a voice in something? And you saw the amount of people that was here, so... They definitely wanted things for Cran Hill, so that's good. That's the future, after all. For the government and the Church of Scotland to put the kind of things on, it means that you can do something. It means that it gives you something to look forward to in the future, I believe. So. Working together to work out what's best for everybody, working collaboratively and not competitively, is at the heart of participatory budgeting. And I think that's really the big picture that although we've been doing a, a micro-experiment, that actually, if as a country as a whole, we were looking to where to, to best spend money, we'd get huge value for, for what we're doing. If we have a group and set up some volunteers with a lead in place, they really can thrive and drive that much more than we could ever do when it comes from the heart of the community. I actually would like to thank them all because it's, it's a good thing. Eh? I'd heard it before, but I didn't think Grand Hall would get it, and we did get it. To the people who voted for us, just thanks so much. It was really good boost for us to know that they thought we were worthwhile. When you get older sometimes, you see yourself. How many people do think about you? But they did. That was excellent. Rob, a massive thank you. Every penny counts, and every penny counts and how it changes a person's life. Just to have the money available for us to, to make a bid for it, it was great because looking for just small amounts of money is quite difficult. Oh, I can't, actually can't thank them enough. Absolutely fantastic. Put the money where the money's needed. That's my motto, definitely. And that's exactly what they did. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me and all the kids as well because um, we're going to use this money very wisely as we're always needing equipment. So it means a lot to us and be very helpful. So thanks very much. Well, I did say to the audience uh, that day, thank you very much. I did say that to them, I gave them a wee wave. Thank you very much, that was great. Um, and I thank, thank the people that gave us the money, because without that we wouldn't be able to do this. That kind of community buzz really is what we are aiming for. We're aiming for people to feel that they have a voice and that they have a choice about how things develop in their community. Mm -hmm.